All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, and everything possibly in between over on Sean Cross, welcome to, for lack of a better term, the epilogue, the concluding fourth chunk of the Anatomy Crosscast, going full circle, people, after three years, bringing back to the grave the first band we happened to interview. And like I said at the beginning of this session, there were two other bands. There were two other personalities, but, well, things fell through. And hopefully we can also return to commissioning a public space in an isolated room. That way people walk by and they can be like, whoa, what's going on in there? Who's he talking to? It's like, well, this is Sean yeah. Cross from the Anatomy Crosscast. That was always the dream is after perfecting the formula, which I believe we have now getting up to what will be episode 84. Well, now we just kind of look back and kind of take a breath and realize all the mistakes we made, but also all of the amazing improvements that we've made. Um, like I just said to Dane, I wanted to provide a brief shout out to both Brandon O'Neill from Vile Revelation, Uwu Gasm, and Abaddon for suggesting that basically after the point of our debut podcast session earlier this year with Vile Revelation to promote their EP, Cast from Eden, well, he suggested that we do album listening sessions with the band before we even get the show started. And let's just say that's improved a lot of things. And then part two with our good friend Dane Evans here, which it's been a real pleasure talking with him on the show for the first time. Um, he then suggested that out of a sense of realism, empathy, and just keeping all parties considered, well, from now on, you guys will basically be seeing three-hour sessions kind of combined over the course of a month or two that way at a time right we're not doing 4.5 hours in one go but over time especially if there are five or six members in the band and if they decide to do this well that's how we will be making those massive sessions just making it easier and more plausible hopefully more inviting for all of the hundreds of bands who might be on the show going into the future ap after episode 84. But most importantly, people, this is the meat and bones of the Anatomy Crosscast. This happens to be my favorite part because both me and Dane are pretty in-depth lyricists. So now we shall be going under the skin of To The Grave's third full-length album, Everyone's a Murderer, coming out this next Friday. After all, it's the 25th of August. It's really awesome to be here and to be going under the skin of a To The Grave record in the first place. But this one, people, it was just so much fun. And I know that there are going to be hella stories under the skin of Everyone's a Murderer. But start off on a more human level. Dane, how you doing, man? <laughs> I'm doing well, man. Uh, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the sexy new format. Uh, get used to it. You know? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I'm... Thank, thank you, bro. Yeah, it's good to... Uh, it's always good to chat with you. And it's getting very hectic now in the lead up to <laughs> yeah. everything, man. It's like... It's a weird calm before the storm that we never usually have, so it's kind of different. But Absolutely. And yeah. if I may provide context, not only do they have an album coming out this next Friday, but for those of you who do not know, they are embarking on a U.S. local tour with Oceano, Half Me, and Victims across the United States. I will be seeing them once they come through town um, to Phoenix, Arizona. I believe it's the 6th of September, like maybe the 11th. It's somewhere around there. It's like closer Something to the like beginning. Yeah, so yeah. I'll be seeing them. Anybody who wants to say hi to either me or, of course, duh, to the grave, because, you know, that's the band there. It's not me playing. Um, <laughs> be sure to come say hi, because I definitely know I'll be hanging around the table with Dane and the boys a lot when I can. But um, I'm looking forward to that storm as well as they come back through town. Yeah. So going under the skin of everyone's a murderer. Well, we understand this to be a very fun record. I think it's a very fun record. Um, so we kind of enter right into a hypothetical imaginary scenario. So I quote, either think of it as a graveyard, library, movie store, or buried time capsule analogy. If your album wasn't an album, what creative medium would you prefer? 
for everyone's a murderer? Ooh. Interesting question. All right. Uh, like, I'm, so I'm a big artist outside of, um, outside of the music. I, I love, you know, obviously my tattooing and stuff like that, but I feel like the visual part of a, of the band has every, every bit to do with the, um, the broader scheme as the music does. Right. Um, yes. So man, if, sometimes a good artwork can can carry things so far and can carry a message or or even a piece of music so far i can make it make more sense can make it uh there's so many things like that so man i would straight up say like a human painting or something like that interesting um, yeah yeah just that's straight acrylic yeah <laughs> i mean that's that's really cool and that's the thing too before we've had um shout out to swedish band gluttony because they were a fan of night and the living dead and all those classic horror movies that you would collect from the um from the movie store from like uh trying to think of it um blockbuster there we go so you yep. collect you know those vhs tapes or those even just kind of tinier tapes from the blockbuster so they actually describe their um one of their albums as like a horror movie and looking on the back and then describing like a movie like this is a testament of the dead or whatever and okay. then we've had plenty of books um i think one of my favorite ones that we did was with a band called parasitic embodiment they're a, one of those new space my wait new wave myspace deathcore bands um and we ended up imagining someone walking into the woods and finding a shrine and then there was a book buried beneath the shrine you got that up and that would be their album cover blah 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 so in this case this is challenging but i like this challenge we are simply talking about a painting as opposed to Hold the up. music sean i reckon i can give you a better answer then because you you've, you've given me the like i, I have to <laughs> uh, all right acrylic thing sure um that's that's safe enough man so I, I guess if i if i do want to focus in on this album a little bit more man it does i grew up as a fucking like a, a proper vandal right like i was um getting in a lot of trouble doing graffiti and that's how i ended up getting into my like doing art and, and everything like that um and i feel like it, like just those days taught me a lot um but man um things i didn't realize until later on in life like i'd see radical graffiti and not really think much of it um until you know i get to an age you know I, I, until i get to an age like i'm at now and realize that stuff like that is really an outcry from parts of the world where you know what i mean something so little with uh can do so much so a couple of words can do so much and i think that's why i liked everyone's a murderer and that's why the title stuck with me so much so like I always thought maybe a um I've got a stencil somewhere like a you know what I mean like a little, a little stencil cut out that you spray on and it says yeah uh, yeah yep. it says nothing humane happens in a slaughterhouse that's that's the one I've got and um I want to get an everyone's murderer one made so man if I feel like that would be it so get graffiti that. stencil then or graffiti yeah yeah hard vandalism in the name of fucking getting these animals out of cages man oh yeah so in that case i like this i like this even more so then we kind of enter into an imaginary scenario where you are not you know the dane evans that is the front man the lyricist of to the grave you are a random individual possibly in the depths of downtown sydney perth wherever you go and you just happen to go into the right alleyway and you see this album cover right you're thinking to yourself holy shit like that's a cool logo for one there's a whole bunch of kids just mercilessly tearing apart limb from limb mutilating a cow and some of them even have smiles on their faces right just the fact that the children are there especially in today's world in today's context is very very creepy and ominous in and of itself so you yeah. see this alternative creative medium depiction of your album cover also in the perspective of a consumer what would be your first impressions if you weren't like what do you think that person would be thinking just like holy shit <laughs> yeah, the, yeah so the album cover itself man i, I do feel like it like that's but that's been what everyone said to me they've 
have gone, man, it's a, uh, it, it hits you like a brick and then you see the kids and then you have to take a step back. Yeah. And I guess that was, um, man, you, you get it right in death metal. We get so caught up in not, not thinking about those little things so much, um, until they're in people's faces and it's like, yeah, man, well, I guess, um, for me, it seems so, uh, so, uh, so normal and so on my side of the fence to say that, like, uh, kids are taught, uh, hate to hate certain animals and to love other, other animals, whether we realize it or not. Um, that's something that I know. That's something that I feel like is blatantly obvious. Um, but maybe other people getting to make that connection, uh, I guess because I'm so years removed from making that myself, I, uh, you know, the value of it um, can be kind of lost on me. Right. But I, I really feel like seeing this kind of thing. That's what people have said to me, man. It's like, wow, you see the mother, like, feeding a kid an intestine. And it's like, yeah, like, <laughs> I guess so. That's kind of, dude. that's the message, man. It, it's it's fucked is what it is but like yeah. it really i think it's perspective changer it really changes people's viewpoint on things because it's like one way that i interpreted it especially after the context i've been provided knowing to the grave to be the band that it was it was like dude it's almost like innocence forced to slaughter so you have the kids you have that symbolism of innocence but even at that age it's like, man, if you saw a kid tearing a horse or horse, tearing a cow apart like that, just limb from limb. And then on top of that, you have an enabler, right? You have someone who's continuing that tradition of mercilessness. Um, there's a term I kind of designed for that. And it's mostly in regards to deep South Catholic and like Christian families, how over time, and maybe they live in sundown cities, which adds an even deeper depth of darkness to it. I call it blood washing because not only are you brainwashing, but you're brainwashing over multiple generations and the brainwashing itself ends up seeping into the, into the DNA and the blood of these people. And like, that's how they live. That's the life that yeah. they live. So. Right. Blood washing. You said that's, blood that's wild. Washing. Yeah. Blood yeah. washing. I like that. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's uh, so yeah, I heard a great uh, quote a little while ago where it was like, I don't know if I said this in the last podcast or not. I feel like I may have where it was like, if you put a, you know, you got a, a baby, you put a rabbit and a piglet in the cot, it's not going to know which one to eat and which one to play with. It's oh, going to, you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> and the, the other thing that kind of hit me like a brick man was like, and I feel like, I feel like I don't do it enough justice when I say it. Um, to the point enough justice uh but like if you taught a child that this spider this fish this this dog this cat this pig uh it has every intention every wish of being here and being happy and healthy as you do and really like we're no more important or less important than them for that um how is that child ever going to grow up and hate someone else based on skin color or any any anything arbitrary like that they they it it's non-existent so yeah if you can if you continue to teach them of an inferiority complex and you indoctrinate them in an infer inferiority complex then you have children that think that they're constantly traversing skyscrapers as opposed to being here near the soil i yeah we're, we're this is this is a good conversation i like this this is good yeah, shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, well, hatred, hatred is taught, bro. It's hatred is taught. taught exactly, man. And that's the thing too. Like, even if it's such a smaller scale than what is the abusive nature of the slaughterhouse um, industry, you know, just slaughtering animals. I remember being taught, or at least learning, how many people in the world at least have a little bit of an inferiority or inferiority complex because of how open and willing they are to smash insects at the slightest inconvenience as opposed to sweeping them up and taking them outside i remember learning from a very early age and you know this is kind of depressing for a second but it's okay um 
before me and my immediate family settled as far as living anywhere for more than two months. I remember before I made any actual friends and actually started my life, I actually just kind of like observed insects and I would try my best to preserve them and provide them that love and company because no human being would provide me the company. And that also really kick started that ideology, that mentality of preserving and nurturing every form of life that you can, especially when it's so incredibly easy to either try to take care of them and raise them into extending their own existence or just squashing them for the insignificance that they are. I yeah. have developed a loathing for folks like that in this world because there are plenty of them who are like, Eli, hate bugs, you know, squash them, kill them all. I'm like, yeah. well, here's the thing. How would you feel if one day some insectoid extraterrestrial species came down, they saw how you <laughs> treated insects, and then they just wiped you from the earth? How would you feel exactly. about that? And I always tell every single person um, that I feel needs to hear that, even my own immediate family about that. I'm like, dude, you have to treat every other organism in your ecosystem with that same respect, and not yep. just because you maybe you have an inute sense of paranoia regarding that insectoid extraterrestrial species it's like don't just nurture life because you are in perpetual paranoia and fear of that what if scenario do it because well to be honest most of those insects dude there were fucking tarantulas back probably during the jurassic period maybe even predating that that were the size of fucking horses dude <laughs> like, yeah yeah like it's exactly it's crazy that we and and we it's so normal man because of the world that we that human beings live in but it's crazy that that's an intruder like we will always find the way to play victim when there's a mosquito or a like and i i get it like there are things that um but i'm not um i'll say a couple of things to this point right like i wasn't always like this um right. i used to be a butcher bro I, I used to, I, I worked at KFC. I used to throw meat at my fucking vegan band members. Um, but then I used to go out and I'd cry my eyes out if I'd see a homeless dog. I would, uh, you know what I mean? It, it, the the why is never met and my the yeah. circle of compassion were two semicircles. And yeah, there was almost a selective sense of empathy. And it's exactly, exactly. what you mentioned earlier, not being able to decipher the importance when you have a pig and a rabbit in the car, it's like, well, I usually eat the pig. I don't really eat the rabbit and they're hard to catch anyways. What's the yeah. easier target? And then you're like, oh shit, I have a targeting mindset and it's instinct for sure. Yeah. It's, been an, it's been our instinct to do that for how many years now? You know, how, yeah. how long have we been around? But I think it is yeah. important to reflect upon that. And if not, convincing everybody else around you to do it at least take accountability and responsibility for yourself and yep. if you feel deep in your soul that it's wrong what's being done in the slaughterhouses then act upon it enact new routines enact new patterns and um that's kind of like where i would extend my perspective upon that because i'm still a carnivore and i think back to like just really instinct and well they're here for a reason right it's just the fact of not abusing them and not compacting them into tunnels like you've talked about on the show um for me that's kind of where my stance is but i do find find it admirable that there are plenty of folks who are not only willing to completely pluck that from their diet and look to new modern day agricultural science anomalies right that allow us to kind of move away from that but then on top of that they're being advocates they're being the voices for these animals i it's it's admirable it really is um yeah th this is this is this is why i love talking to people like you man this is why i love talking to dane thank you for example. thank you bro. yeah like it's um I will say so my my opinions on all of this have like um if you want and this is why i guess uh uh a lot of like vegans don't like me right mm. like i get i get the most pushback from vegans because of of my uh you know what i mean like 
my methods and or whatever, like however I choose to do activism. So it's not necessarily always appreciated. And because I tend to be a bit more of a, uh, like I reject the basic the definition of veganism. Right. Where everybody, uh, it says, uh, hang on, if I can remember it, uh, veganism is a practice which aims to exclude as far as possible and practicable all forms of animal exploitation which I think is bullshit because as soon as it becomes uh, impracticable uh, for them to not eat animals for whatever fucking reason that they deem necessary, they, they, it, their ethics fall apart. That's why I feel like, you know, veganism has been bastardized and it should have always been an extension of the human rights we value. We, um, and you said it perfectly yourself, the golden rule, right? Like, do unto others as you as you would have done unto yourself uh if you wish something upon others you should wish like you shouldn't have an issue with others wishing it upon yourself yes uh, yeah and that's that's just animal rights bro we just go fuck yeah you know what I mean? yeah so, and it, the thing is too i would like briefly extend upon that by saying that if you want to push philosophy as if you're in a cult then you know not not calling veganism a cult just making it dramatic um yeah. if you want to push f philosophy as if you are in a cult understand that you're in the cult as well and understand that you need to like push you need to act upon what you believe in and do that with yourself before you push on push it onto others um because dude when, when basically I think a really good example kind of rooting back to religion a little bit because i think we talked about that briefly how there are plenty of people in higher points of power um there's this one fucking creepy ass pastor here in the u.s he's based in texas i keep forgetting his name it's probably better that i do um i think yeah. you know what i'm talking about he just has these like crystal white blue eyes yeah, that, that dude yeah i don't know the guy's name but i've said yeah right yeah. So it's like, I think of people like that and I truly think to myself, hey, if you wanna push the word of God onto others, then you need to not be an obviously blatantly theatic Satanist behind the scene. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's insane. <laughs> that's, that's kind of what I say to a lot of people, man, there's a big thing with like veganism where it's a, it's a picnic movement where uh, there's a whole lot of, yeah, there's, there is enough people where, like, if I go out and I, I absolutely firmly believe that this is a Holocaust, this is the greatest atrocity we have ever committed and continue to commit on beings that feel everything that we value, pain, suffering, love. And it is on such a scale, we will, we, yeah, it's ridiculous. So the, when, when I write a song like Burn Your Local Butcher and people suggest to me that I should talk about how the environment is actually impacted by slaughterhouses, it's like, would we ever do this when, like, with people being packed into trucks? And w if we argued that that was impacting the environment, we would we would look, like, fucking r ridiculous. Like, yeah. so that's, that's, that's why I think, yeah, the, the movement needs to figure its shit out and figure out if this agrees that it's fucked or not because if it's fucked yeah. then we need to yeah we need to not be pussies about it really yeah i agree by the way i i just remember the priest his name is kenneth copeland yeah, copeland that's it yeah my god dude the, is so fucking the crazy yeah the fucking crazy eyes <laughs> yeah so after you know that conversation um i think we can go into question three, part b which really we've already been talking about the album cover and our impressions of it you know, you were behind the scenes getting this cooked up, having these important conversations, if not you and the boys. So the question goes as follows. Let's talk about the album cover artist um, and then, quote, discuss the conversations and ideas that occurred between the band and artists that would produce this image. So yeah. um, let's go ahead and give the artist some credit. <laughs> For sure, bro. Yeah, I fucking I love doing that. Didn't so they more of, uh I uh, fuck. I wish I knew, and even if I did know it, I would probably butcher the pronunciation of his uh, his name. He's a Ukrainian dude, so likely did all of this 
in, like in an active fucking war zone basically um right but uh he was yeah man so in chatting to him about it we've always kind of gone to him when we needed our our really fucked concepts brought to life um he's just great at that i uh, he says a little does a lot um and this time it was funny i, I said in an interview the other day he was um he was a little confused about the because i I'd, I'd tossed him a bunch of like like i said to you kind of like uh animal rights almost in quote if you were like devil's advocate propaganda style shit, right um and then yeah there we go and i said to him dude i need something like this like i need something as impactful as this without it being so simple let me let me just try to i guess uh i'll even just try and pull up on my fucking camera yeah like little little things like this if i can switch my camera around well maybe, maybe I can't, but like, can you see these guys like yes yeah like just boom little i just sent him shit like that and i was like hey man we want our version of this you know um we want the thing that's going to be small and impactful and then he uh he didn't really know what to do and then we sent the title once that was like unique leader knew about it they're like yeah we love that cool and he was like oh dude done and then sent us the like really um i'll post it one day he sent us this image just not colored and i was like right. don't change anything this is awesome <laughs> like right yeah but That's uh super we sick. had we we did like in the lead-ups to this man we did have uh a lot of conversations about the art and it wasn't always going to go in this direction like we had uh we had a few that were a uh, quite different um, maybe i can leak one here and see if i can it'll be poorly showed to the screen but right and this is just to for... show people some animal rights art and just you know kind of get the activism in there i think um this this one with the fork on and the animal on it that's that's one of the images you pulled up um yeah that one the uh so i've i've got it here uh yeah here we go Check this out. Oh shit! So, so, I don't know if you can see much of that. I'll I'll post it. So like, um, some of the song titles are a bit wrong and all that, but it's basically like, right. it's a, it was another angle entirely. It was still using the realistic images, but kind of framed, made to look pretty, but yeah. the bloody slaughterhouse floors, like, um. So we went a couple of these angles and it just it didn't feel it. it yeah i think you know the go man you're creative if it doesn't it doesn't i made these myself and i think i must have spent fucking 10 hours on this one in general and i that's too long yeah yeah agreed um so w w if i may too what, what was the artist from ukraine how do you spell his name d-a-e uh morph m-o-r-p-h Ah, Day Morph. Okay, I think I've heard of this guy before. Day Morph he's artist. Done, he's done some legendary covers. Okay, so for Hellweed example. For what? Sorry. Um, the album cover for Hellweed. I think that's mm. the first thing I'm seeing. Art by mm. art the, the, the art by Day Morph. Okay, um, that might help. <laughs> I guess I'll look it up on Facebook then. But just trying yeah. to like provide some more spotlight to his his stuff. Okay, if I think you, I found uh, is that yeah. profile picture is Jesus or something? <laughs> something kind of yeah, yeah, like yeah. That. Okay, it doesn't cool. look yeah, it doesn't look like the guy until you go to his page and it's like holy fuck, he can <laughs> that profile picture, man. Like, all right, yeah, like have a have a look at some of this dude's and everything he posts. He posted one oh, the other wow. day that is like wow, right? Yeah, like <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. The dude's brain is fucking from another. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This is sick to see. No, this is great. Yeah, okay. man. He. Yeah. Maybe so it's just something in his brain, man. That, like you go to him and he brings the ideas to life. I feel like if I went to him with a sketch, it would take away so much of the 
the cool shit that he brings just rubbing his brain cells together you know what i mean yeah yeah look, look at that like this this is gnarly this is gnarly yeah, man. <laughs> there's God. one the first one i ever saw i don't if you fucking scroll down far enough there was one i saw where it's like actually oh, let me try it. the party cannon one that makes so much sense now yep yeah dude the party cannon one look at that thing for hours right yeah um, no I, we we had them on recently or earlier this year oh that's such a good album cover there's, so a, there's one shit. uh there's one that i found years ago and it it stuck with me but man the imagery it's basically like this big book codex something the codex of not the codex of flesh right maybe let me have a i think look. the codex of flesh was done by kaylin oh yeah yep yep moments of misanthropy baby moments of misanthropy <laughs> we oh, almost no. had a the show earlier earlier this year oh, really? but okay. yeah Here we go. and of course he did your director's cuts <laughs> again another we were in Europe, man, and he sent us this artwork because we were fried and we didn't have any ideas. And it was like, that's magic. Like, look at Dude, that. I really um, want to get the five by five flag for this one. So good. Dude, me too. I, I want that. Fuck. I don't have any of my fucking cool shit. I found the album name, by the way. It's called okay. uh, Bands of Vir Virulency. Bands um, of Virulency? Virulency. If you just want to Google this, you might find the well, the cover. Okay. Um. The album's the anthropodermic manuscript of retribution, some long shit, like. <laughs> oh, God. But this album cover, man, I saw it when I was, like, 15 or some shit, and I was like, I need this artist <laughs> in my fucking life. It's a big, like. See. So, yeah, Dave, yeah. Bands of Virulency, that's that's what I heard. Bands of Virulency. Virulency, V-I-R-U-L-E-N-C-Y. Yeah. Right, okay. And I guarantee it'll be one of the first things that pops up, this artwork of theirs. Okay. Fuck, um, fucks me up every time I see it. <laughs> it's like uh, a big is book it for made out of... Is it for epicardiectomy? No, no, no. Uh, the band is called Virulency. Okay, okay. Virulency. Oh, okay. What, what's the piece called? That might be easier. Um, uh, the album. Can you see that? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I see that. Okay. I found cool. it. Yep. Cool. Um, it's like a big fucking library. Yeah. <laughs> big book in the middle made out of flesh and bodies and shit. Yeah. That thing. Okay. <laughs> absolute okay. insanity. And... It's absolute insanity. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. The anthropodermic manuscript of retribution. Yeah. Huh. I Mouthful. I want to go down with love, man, because it's yeah, sweet, crazy shit. So then, you know, we kind of go for full circle, and after a long time, you ended up hiring this artist to Daymorph to help you out with um, the direct. Well, he randomly sent you it, and then you're like, "Yeah, we absolutely have to make this guy the artist for the new album cover." So then, going all the way frontwards in time, then. We have well, direct. Um, we have everyone's a murderer. So, what were some of the? Um, you you said basically you wanted to make sure that the album cover itself um, just reminded you or reminded him um, then of just animal rights art, but a more graphic version of that. He provided you yeah. the rough draft for this, and then well. We have the image before we we have the image before us um, pretty much yeah and then like to, to give a tiny bit more context like it was um i feel like once we got this artwork and i know it it tends to be the opposite direction like a lot of the ideas follow a lot of yeah a lot of the art follows the idea this time the art really set a lot of pieces into place it's like the color scheme wasn't always going to be like red and blue again but it's like now it has to be again i feel like this is really strong um little things like that that really made it like like i said before the visuals make such a big big thing for me um <clears throat> a large part of the the picture that when we got this artwork it really did um 
you know what I mean? The mix had a different context and things like that. It was, it was cool. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So then we kind of see this before us, and this is drastically different, I think, from anything visually, album cover-wise, that you guys have done before. But mm -hmm. honestly, if I were absolutely oblivious, maybe I was a 90s or 80s metal gatekeeping elitist and I saw this, I would say, huh, these new kids are trying to emanate like Cannibal Corpse. That's kind of the first mm -hmm. impression that I got from this is just pure unhinged Cannibal Corpse. But oh, wait, there are kids on the album cover. Hold up. <laughs> like, yeah, man. That, that's the thing, right? That's what we didn't realize until we, we'd seen it. It was like, oh, man, it's it's so classic looking like. Yeah holy fuck that that's perfect for the because obviously the last thing we'd seen him do for us was the director's cuts the, the guy with the knife or whatever yeah, yeah amazing cover i remember what we told him for that was we wanted our like our 80s movie poster collage vibe and he did that it still looked like modern as fuck and it looked amazing but it was like okay he's got a style so you go to him for that style and then man when he like i don't know if we sent him a song or not but I, I know I'd sent him some like lyrics, the song titles, the album title, and right. he he got that classic vibe for us. Which yeah, then then like I said, listening to the mix, looking at this cover, you go, man, it all kind of feels a bit, yeah, like like harkening back. It's cool. Like, yeah, no, it's it's sick. It looks really really good. So then you. you know we we kind of then review and the conversation goes back and forth. You get this image and everything's kind of good to go. So then I would say that would be a pretty good segue into doing track by track lyrical analysis for everyone's a murderer. So yeah. we start off this commentary typically by asking why, quote, everyone's a murderer. Was it instinct or is there like, this has to be the name? Like, and there basically that would be yeah. the question is what was the reason behind the album title? Yeah, this this has to be the name. So we are uh, of the album name and the and the song titles and everything like that are very yeah. Uh, again, another visual component for me. People see that, read that, associate it all. Um, so with with director's cuts, again with the movie title, the movie poster thing. The whole point was this is yeah the the uh, cinematic right theatrical uh, blah blah blah. Um, this time taking all that off the cards i really wanted to yeah um i remember the idea that came before the title was i do need a a hard uh almost like a what would like a straight edge band do if they would if they were trying to be annoying about it you know what i mean but, um, <laughs> yeah yeah so it's like what the fuck what's my version of that what's gonna make people go all right they're not playing it like safe anymore um <laughs> and also I really love tight like album titles like um let me think about uh like the plot in you could you watch your children burn um yeah yeah all our gods have abandoned us all these like kind of long titles yes. I love that you yeah. understand the importance and you have a fascination with album titles like that cuz yes, dude, dude. Oh, like I write yeah. to you my darling decay awaken providence that was mm. such it's a statement it's a statement yes yeah and it's it it can say so much dude yeah exactly like we could we could do our own fucking i think when you get it you get it and like then each title becomes its own like yeah it's a way yeah. to fucking hold that thing in glass i don't know how to explain right. it so so yeah with um everyone's a murderer man um i remember having variations of this i don't remember exactly what they were but um a few of them, like uh, all are all are cremated equal. That ended up just being that, like a. Uh, that's fucking sick. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I know, right? It's looking like, cool. Um, that's going to be like, all right, it's coming out. Like we've we've got that as for something else. So like, but no one gets to steal that now because I've, I've said <laughs> it. This is um, we had. I'm just trying to remember because there were a couple more, but. Oh, Either way, crazy. and then we, we bounced around. Oh my god, dude. That and is I, so I think, easy. That's such an easy manipulation instead of all our dude, creative, yeah. 
all are cremated equal. It's fucking sick. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's um. I think I saw it on. Fuck. Where was it? Like. Uh, like like a Timu beanie or something. It had like been stitched on the front of some like fucking you know eBay ass beanie. And I was like, what? That's that's such a good quote. Yeah, I don't know. Gold. Gold. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah. And then when we landed on everyone's a murderer, dude, it was like when I did. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's so simple. I remember just like. Sometimes I'll think of a title and be like, we have to put that to something before someone steals it because it explains my song better than it'll explain their fucking song. But everyone's a murderer. I was like, this is, that's so to the grave, bro. Like, it's incredibly to the grave. And then yeah. the fact that you have tracks on this album where, you know, good old Spike Colt style, you're just like, I says to the grave or whatever. It's, yeah. it's been a little bit since we've listened to it, so do for do forgive me. I don't know which song I heard that from, or I don't remember which song that's on. But like, dude, those more prolific identity-inducing songs, and then just such a an album cover that's like, yeah, that has to be to the grave. Like, what the fuck do you mean? Especially if you had a leaker, and it's like one band from Australia is planning to release an album later this year called everyone's a murderer i wonder who it is it's like dude i'm not yeah. fucking stupid it's to the grave <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly i think i think it was our um the way i heard someone say i forget who it was fucking forgive me um but it was like we'd spent a, enough time as a band being like you know for lack of a better term like oh please like just just no, nah, we're trying to be we're trying to be nice about it. We're like not even not even nice about it, but like come to our side of the fence, you'll see that we're right, or you'll see that we're blah blah blah. Like now it's a bit more like no matter what we post, no matter the angle we take, no matter the how nicely we ask people to stop stabbing animals, they're gonna call us fucking freaks. They're gonna they're gonna get on every post and and fucking bacon and steak whatever. So now is our turn to just be like, oh okay, well. Hey, fuck you too. You know, like, um, <laughs> yeah, we're like, yeah, that's why we, why we started doing this in the first place, I, I guess. Like, yeah, um, to stand your ground from a creative medium. Well, yeah, like, yeah. And I feel like that, that for me, like, I'm a big pushbacker, right? I will push back on everything because that's just ingrained in me and I'm an idiot. Like, yeah. Um, but oftentimes people like that's when people back up and that like they stick stern with their points and they go, no, listen, dickhead, like this is, you're not getting this right. And man, that's when I fucking listen. I know that might suck to deal with, but like I've, I've had a lot of good points illustrated to me that way. Yeah. Where I kind of bridge up and then they bridge back up. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, dude. I mean, honestly, I, I can tell you this for sure. And pe some people might think this is bullshit, but you know, oh, well, if you do, I love being wrong. I love getting my perspective fucking curveballed. That way I can become a better person because my father relished in being extremely arrogant and just one sided and quote, if it's if it's my way or the highway, and he would do it for yeah. everything significant and insignificant. So I take great pride in absorbing new perspective because perspective is diamonds to me, friend. So it's like when you learn new shit, sometimes that's the pressure you need to harness those diamonds. And then eventually, you know, you'll probably have a kingdom built upon that perspective, built upon those lessons learned. So um, we start with track one on Everyone's a Murderer. This is Set Yourself on Fire. sure you have a lot of shit to talk about with this so unleash it friend. unleash it <laughs> yeah uh, <laughs> well yeah uh, so um this one i i thought 
I guess the, the idea did start where this was almost going to be an album title um, because I really wanted to I really wanted the song title to say a lot but the lyrics say almost something different because I didn't want to I wanted there to be more left to the imagination but I I want to I want to lead your imagination somewhere with the lyrics right so obviously that, that maybe that's jumping ahead a step why I wrote this song bro is because I feel like <laughs> like hey no I, I don't agree uh, with um, going out and harming yourself or harming others for an ideology uh, I, I don't think it's something that should be appreciated or appraised um, and then you pair that with the fact that if anybody ever did that for animal rights they would not be considered a hero they'd be considered you know deranged insane and they'd be laughed at and mock that so this was um, while the world was kind of going a little crazy about you know about that uh, it was like hey stop and think for a second that if um, you know what I mean if somebody out there went and self-immolated in the name of animal rights uh, would it bring any attention to the issue or would it be another reason to mock us would it be another reason to minimize the suffering that animals are going and, and it's exactly what would happen so it's like man yeah not even not even going out in public <clears throat> setting yourself on fire would do the job right you know what i mean if, if it's a human related issue you could probably get the pat on the back for everybody if you're doing that but if it's for animals you're an idiot what are you doing yeah. And yeah. I, I wanna I wanna bring a point to this song specifically because like looking at that title and really thinking about that title, I then look back to this one gentleman over here in the US who set himself ablaze, like doused himself in gasoline, I think went to a Trump rally and set himself on fire, and then somewhere close to the body or somewhere like where I think where he lived, they found a note saying, I did this because none of you will pay attention if nothing else is done i have to basically commit commit um to yeah. to make a point that right now we are in the final stages of being under the thumb globally by an overarching regime he was basically saying hey wake up we're about to actually be under siege globally yeah because you guys are too focused with your day-to-day -day lives. And that's why he set himself on fire. And I mean, the videos were there. And what was really, really terrifying is, ironically, to counter your point, even when people commit themselves like that, they set themselves ablaze and off themselves after they've charcoal themselves, even then half the people in the comment section were like, oh, it must be another deranged Trumpy. I'm like, bro, what the fuck? It, it, you can't, yeah, exa you can't fucking win, you, you'll never, yeah, it'll never do the thing because people are so fucking inherently divided and, you know, on, on stuff like this and we have the avenues now to, <clears throat> to talk so much shit, I mean like, everywhere, it, it's, it's, it's fucking crazy how uh, apathetic the planet is um and and where that rears its head man in, in all these little spots but yeah i guess that was the <clears throat> that was the overarching point it's like um obviously I, I guess to go back to my first point um harming ourselves and harming each other because yeah. somebody else is oppressing us i i i i, I, I understand on a um on a i guess uh a, 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 not you know what I mean? I understand the uh, reasoning behind it. I, I there has to be better ways we can do this. Like like I said, I fucking yeah. I'm always rather you target your violence towards people who, in Minecraft, mind you. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, <laughs> towards those who would yeah yeah. Uh, would wish it upon you and not give you that same benefit of the doubt. I mean, uh, yeah. it needs more power to the people. And Eat the rich, the hard yeah. people, all that type of shit. Because at the end of the day, half of us don't really matter in the grand scheme, and that's what they want us to believe. So it's yeah. like, in this situation, it's like half the people don't care about animals or people, but it's like animals deserve a voice. 
people deserve a voice for sure. But the thing is, animals don't have voices. So we should really be more empathetic in that situation. Well, they, Sean, let me ask you, does a, and I, I just, I, I do this all the time, but like, does a, um, if animals don't have voices, like, I feel like they, they do in the same sense that like, like just because I can't understand them. Right, like right. They, Animals can understand each other in the same way someone, a foreign foreigners, can understand each other, and I can't understand each them. Um, that void of, um, I find that that is a big disconnect uh, that we talk about a lot. Animals are voiceless. No, they're they're not. We don't. We just don't listen, and we we yeah. can't understand them. That's yeah. fair. Uh, that's fair. I'm honestly, I prefer that you decided to bring up that point because too many people still think that. But when you really listen and when you really observe and pay attention, you understand that they do. They just can't speak in various mm-hmm. languages like we can. They have their they have their animal calls and stuff that help them communicate um, different messages across the animal kingdom. But it's just it happens to not be English. So it's English like to us. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, Sean. English to us, my dude. Do, do you live with companion animals at all? Yes, yes. Of course. So you know when they're scared. You know when they're like. And you don't you don't have to be a fucking rocket scientist to know these things. To, yeah, exactly, man. So for people to be, I say these things, and people tell me I'm attributing human emotions to animals. It's like, man, you you're not stupid. If you see a slaughterhouse video, the cows aren't they're backing up. They don't want to be there. Screams like, oh, come on, man. These are these are signs. Just because they're not, you can't. They can't verbalize to you in English. Correct, exactly. That that doesn't mean, yeah. Yeah, and, and the, thing is, the thing is, too, we don't exactly live in a Disney movie where every animal has a voice, but imagine if they did. Mm. You know, oh. imagine if they did. Like, if you heard a cow saying, I just think it's like, Betty out! Like, mm. you'd be like, oh, time to let Betty out. It's like, dude, <laughs> oh. I'm, not, I'm not religious at all, but I, I went vegan the moment I heard that if animals could formulate a religion, the devil would be a human in human form yeah, and if yeah. animals if animals could pick up arms and fight we would be wiped out in a day like, <laughs> like it, it, dude it's beautiful it's absolutely beautiful that you mentioned that because i won't get on too much of a tangent with this because we yeah, still yeah, sorry. Uh, you're good it's it's i'm the host bro you're good um we still have nine tracks to get through but i am writing um, a sci-fi fantasy novel about basically a parallel dimension where the entire animal kingdom during the industrial revolution revolted, took over the earth, and with the help of a sentient, dormant Mother Earth spirit who said, I'm not Earth, bitch, I'm a Lanzia, they took back the earth and they basically, through her abilities, like they, they designed a telepathic language, so magic, that's really where the magic is, but she with her abilities actually devolves all humans who want to stand against the animal kingdom and say, this is black magic. This is sorcery. You're Satan. Like, what what are you doing? Instead, she is just going to devolve them and send them back to the caveman era and then have them hide in the woods. And on that earth too, basically those humans are like cryptids to us. They are cryptids to those kingdoms because it's like those were those who were left behind the rest of the animal kingdom and the 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 chunks of humanity who wanted to ascend and evolve well with elanzia's help they they evolve and they you know people are going to be like oh you're writing a story about fairies but it's different um because it's it's going to be just fucking stupid bro oh my god like yeah straight up we'll see what happens but i think you'll i think you'll really like that narrative because it, it speaks from a non-manic point of misanthropism i think yeah misanthropy yes misanthropy. Yeah. um just a, a normal resentment for the rest of the human race but um yeah track Not two like a hostile one i know what yeah, you mean. yeah yeah a more peaceful like not even condescending it's meant to be a more peaceful way of saying you're just not choosing to evolve so we have to leave you behind we're not going to kill you but we're going to evolve your minds to a point to where you don't even know what the hell is going on but because you chose to be animals you don't deserve the opportunity to evolve and that's that's kind of like one of the bigger plots of that of that story 
I will say, man, if anybody gets any of that twisted, it's like, dude, is this your first day with sci-fi? Like, this, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's yeah. all brand scope fuckery. Like, it's, yeah. Right. So we have track two, Die or Die. Okay. That was pretty fucking good so far. Finn, what do you think, bro? How are we looking? Could you hear everything? I can hear everything just fine. You have to pardon me, though. Like, I'm, I'm doing housework while I'm listening and tuning in and shit. <laughs> Fair enough, bro. Fair seems, enough. Seems to be a trend. Anytime we stream, I've always got something going on. Hell, my own stream, I was tattooing because I was at work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough, bro. All right. Well, we will go ahead and immediately move on to uh, the next track and the listing. That way we can just keep this going. Um, um, yes. What's up? Oh, sorry. I thought I heard someone, I thought I heard someone say, like, hold up, hold up. No good breath. Hit it. Okay, cool, cool. <laughs> Let's do it. What's going on here? Yeah. So, yeah, that's um, D yeah, DXE or die, right? Um, <laughs> so, I, I love that that looks like die. And people, yeah, I, I kind of say it as die as well because it's um, the DXE man is, uh, I, I guess, an abbreviation of direct action everywhere so the the action being um being abbreviated with an x uh so that's that's actually an american organization and why i wanted to bring attention to them is they're a uh, non-profit organization who do uh slaughterhouse lock-ons and stuff like that and uh big wide-scale public uh, animal liberation efforts so they'll have hundreds of people walk onto slaughterhouses factory farms and say no more killing today drop your weapons we are peaceful you drop your weapons no more blood gets spilled today um in fact we're taking this one or these two to safety um and then what then happens is this is why i wrote songs like terrorist threat because they'll be put on the uh, uh fbi terrorist watch list um and then hunted and tracked all over america they'll turn over farms sanctuaries uh homes to find animals they they um i think there was a case uh when i first went vegan i heard about this about piglets that were rescued from a farm in america and they were uh, the fbi went all over america taking blood samples and docking uh and getting and like you know what i mean checking to see if pigs ears were docked and things like that getting yeah, blood samples from them to see if they were from this lineage and blah 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 uh fucked things like that to find two piglets all because uh and and then so what had happened uh they'd located them and sent these activists you know charge these activists or whatever but the court case became so like they'd spent millions in finding these activists the two piglets that were rescued from a hog farm in louisiana or something to the point where every this industry went we are putting too much pressure on the public's going to be like what are you what are you trying to hide so they stopped um but this happens and then instead of doing that now they've created agricultural gag laws which means that like you know as soon as you step foot onto a farm they'll they'll say biosecurity and you can get charged and blah 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 uh, okay they're trying uh, to make so it work. Really bad. <laughs> yeah um so yeah that was our like, like i guess this one's this is the to the grave fuck you this is to the grave you know song so um there's even a part at the end where i literally rip off the lyrics from redneck by lamb of god like, like this is a motherfucking invitation um to do it in the same delivery because it was like this this song more than anything else was our fun like we explain what we're here to do right like um what's up we're not here to talk about it. Like it's, oh, it's all, sorry. Sorry. yeah. yeah. The, fir the first thing I say, like, um, don't talk to demons. <laughs> Gave up discourse with dickheads is like, why are we spending so much time trying to convince, uh, people? And this is why we wrote this album in the first place. We're not, we're not writing this to convince anybody anymore. We're writing this for those people that go onto those farms to stay sane, to, with the horror and PTSD that they've got to live with from living in this fucking world, uh, we write songs like this so that they get acknowledged, out, get recognized. Yeah, man, being out there four in the morning, covered in spikes, spiders, barbed wire, like 
smelling like shit, hiding in blood, you know, hearing the screams of animals you can never save, all you want, knowing that everybody who should care is at home in bed, gonna wake up tomorrow and pay for all this to happen. Um, all you want is to know that somebody else cares and gives a fuck. Fair enough. That's what To The Grave is. That's what that song is. Sweet. And that's, it. honestly, it is so, I can't stress this enough. I don't think we have enough bands in the scene doing what you guys do as far as being activists and creating authentic music, music that could correlate with that, but also has its own identity. I think there should be a lot more bands like To The Grave in Deathcore who are activists for some yeah. Yes, like, I agree. I, honestly, I, I won't say too much about it, but I think we don't have a lot of sellouts, politically speaking, but I think just overall, okay, mm. it's not for one side or the other, but I think separating the art from the artist, one, bad. That's not good because you never know whose pockets you're filling because you yeah. choose not to dig into their background. Two, I think the politic neutrality that comes with being a musician, despite it being the counterculture scene of the modern age, I think that's kind of hollow as well. Like, yeah. I understand, of course, that sometimes in the, the modern day, for example, in America, just in America alone, there's the both sides of the same, both wings of the same bird analogy, which I understand because it's not, it's not wrong, but also yeah. we're learning over time certain truths and about certain deceptions. So it's like, I think it's silly that the modern, the modern counterculture incarnate is rather passive. Um, it's it's yeah. rather uh, passive, like passive aggressive and just wants to talk about more personal stuff and that's okay. But I want to, I, this is my manifestation to the, the universe, to the modern day counterculture scene. I want to see more bands like To The Grave who have the balls to make a statement about things that they care about. Because the thing is, this is To The Grave's funner album. This is their more loose album. That way they can just let some steam out. But to the grave is who they are, and we've always needed more bands like to the grave, who are standing up against those who, at the moment's notice, if there were more bands like to the grave, sure, there's the risk of getting demonetized or maybe even deplatformed for this reason or the other. Have the balls though to write an album about something that you care about, that even in here in the U.S. the federal government might not be a big fan of but still write that album, get it out and see what happens. Yeah. Simple yeah, enough. Oh. I, I couldn't have said that better myself, yeah. Okay. We got track three, A Body for a Body, featuring Connor Dixon and Cientel Johns. All right. Oh yeah, baby. Bitch wanna load? Mm. What's going on mm. here? So, this one, um... Okay, let me... Ooh. I'll have lyrics for this one. Got, um... So this, yeah, I fucking love something about this one that I really love with the, um, okay. This one went through a couple of stages <clears throat> that I really feel like started to take on the more like, uh, there are like weird military themes throughout the record that we haven't fully like ran with, but it's definitely, um, like, everybody else does right oh you guys are extreme you're militant you're this that and it's like oh yeah like okay sure yeah like so we we double down a little bit on that um 
a body for a body is definitely like uh, lyrically, I think that one speaks for itself. It's like uh, it's an eye for an eye, but there's I mean, how many bodies are we collecting out here, right? Um, right. And yeah, so the uh, let, me, let me try to think of a line. I'm a lyric. Oh, I know why. Fucking around in so many different drives, but like. <laughs> so, um. Yeah, this, this is the one where it's, I start talk, definitely talking about more of like. Uh, just I need people to say shit with their chest. It kind of goes back to that, right? Like, there's a. Um, and then you can find who's with you or against you on these kind of things. Um. Uh, because uh, for the most part, I think it's it's it's, it's explained in Sian's part of the end, um, um, Chantel's part of the end, where it's um, we get a lot of uh, a lot of pushback. Vegans get a lot of pushback just for being vegan, or for like it goes back to no matter how you say it, people will take an issue with it. So yeah. why why comfort? the uh yeah an oppressor why 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 comfort them it's also not going to help them in leading them to any kind of meaningful decision making or change or like giving anybody uh the information to work with uh but once they do uh if you still choose to take bodies um knowing knowing full well that's something that you know you're against um then you're you're every bit as bad as it's it's the whole bystanders versus perpetrators. What's what is really you know? What I mean? are, are you as bad as that? Yeah, like yeah, you know what I mean? Um, because yeah. <clears throat> a lot of people see themselves as bystanders in this, but it's like uh, handing over your money is is the way that this system is set up to enable you to murder animals. So that's that's yeah. Yeah. I think I think one thing that would be really cool for the fans as well, um, and you know, from a lyricist standpoint, just something really satisfying. What would you say is the most important line in this song that caters to the song title? Mm. What screams a body for a body in this song for you? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh... <laughs> what would you put on uh -huh. quote? Body for a body T-shirt, <laughs> man. Uh, militant to my dying breath. I really liked that I could finally take that word. <laughs> you know, um, I was like, no, that's yeah, like sure. Where um, yeah, I don't know. That that says so much to me, especially when the bit comes in. I really, I had that lyric for a while and then found a spot for it. And I think it, it hits at the right fucking time where it's like, don't don't question it, don't um, and don't question yourself for a second and why why you're here with these convictions. Um, and don't ever stop and and change. Yeah, this 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 theme comes back, but don't ever let people who would rather see animals on their plate tell you how to act, like advocate for them. Yeah. Right. No, it, it, exactly. Like, advocate how you would want to be ad advocated for if you were in a cage. Yeah, fair enough. And so we have that chunk of lyrical writing for this song. Now, I, I, I do forgive me, Chantel, for butchering your name. I seriously thought it was Cantel. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm really bad at that. <laughs> so now that I know how Chantel is spelled, or one of the ways. Um, what was the purpose behind getting Connor Dixon and Chantel Johns on this track? Yeah, uh, so I, that's a, that's a, there is actually a kind of interesting story there, right? So that's what we're here for. <laughs> yeah, I guess in, um, there's a couple, a couple of things here that might seem a little simpler, but they really did blossom into bigger ideas. I've always wanted to get two features on a song and have it not be like thrown in there i feel like this is like it's a great song it, it, it would be a nice a, a good song if it was just me but these guys complement it really well and the parts that they come in 
someone's like, well, you can't take them out now. Like, it, it fits really well. Um, Chantel's part, I think, so what I like about Connor's part really quickly is that it's it's a different version of mine. And it sound, it definitely just sounds like another guy in the army. You know what I mean? In the, in the, mm -hmm. uh, Chantel's part definitely is more, like, the instruments get a bit more melancholic, and it reminds me of early... Australian, I have to say, I have to say, Australian uh, melodic hardcore. Okay. Like, so, just yeah, when I was growing up, parallel to the hardcore and deathcore scenes, because every it was a big inbreeding thing, bro. Like, we just play all these shows with each other, and we'd be all be exposed to like, I guess if anybody knows bands like Hand of Mercy, like that was my attempt at being like, there's a lot of hardcore on this album. Let's throw a bit of the like melodic hardcore. Um, and I love that that sounds like that to me. Um, so her vocals over that and her delivery, the lyrics of like, yeah, uh, no excuses, no forgiveness, no mercy and no exceptions. Just like, she's fucking fuming about it. And yeah. it's, it's sad. It's, it's, it's sad that we're that angry. I don't know. It's, yeah, a lot's portrayed in the delivery of that that I really like. And it was, I remember it being like a track that I loved. So to get that deeper context behind it and just like bands such as Eden Adversary releasing their album Kingdoms of Heresy earlier this year and attempting to have, quote, a benchmarker album for the Indonesian counterculture slash metal slash deathcore scene. I think this is a good testament and a good inclusion of other people from you know from your backyard from your part of town from your part of the planet yeah. so we love to see that we love to hear that and we love to have tributes in real time kind of referencing to certain parts of australian counterculture as it has developed over the years track four we have burn your local butcher featuring identity era featuring no life with this one man so man so this one was like um i guess our uh, the 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 birth of this idea was like okay how do we earth crisis right like they were very um there was a call to action in a lot of their music almost um which i like that we've, we've done that here and there but <laughs> But it's it's always been so like yeah let's gather everybody and um and we'll, we'll march together this one i feel like and the reason why it was uh, almost had a sour taste in a couple of people's mouths is it's like it's very like lone wolfy <laughs> in minecraft <laughs> and, um, it's very like you sit at home and you plot and you plan and then you go out and you, you know what I mean it's 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 dark like that um yeah so and that's why I really liked it um man it's it, it, it is that snap moment it's that like and I sound fucking crazy like to, to the majority saying like you know reading shit like this out but it's again once you see the, the issue as serious as this um yeah man uh you see these places for what they are they're big uh they're they're hell holes oh, for animals yeah. um butchers farms slaughterhouses uh and yeah that's uh this i guess illustrates the peak of frustration with living uh there's a word for it this dystopia with a v where it's like the, the frustration of living in a non-vegan world right like that Ooh. 
not only once animals dead, but once you mocked and ridiculed and like, you know, would gladly have you fucking suffer as well. Uh, this is, this is the flick of that switch to go, all right, enough, fuck that. Like, yeah, bring some balance. Yeah. What would um, be the standout lyric from this song then? Reading it now. Oh. It as a testament, but. <laughs> yeah. Patriot identity uh, era. For the sake of being clickbaity, I guess. <laughs> you know what, man? I I love um burn the house down with everyone inside it. It just like yeah. <laughs> um, I lo- I say that in real life, like in day to day, more often than I should. Just to to, 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 to um, as like a metaphor for things. You know what I mean? Like. <laughs> So I love how I finally got to be like, no, this is a pretty literal sense of the word. Like, I guarantee people who have like worked with me will be like, that's a fucking, yeah. <laughs> you said that to describe some other things before. So like, man, it's funny where my brain goes. Like, yeah. Fair enough. Um, yeah. Cool. We have track five, which is Vegan Day of Violence. Pretty bold one there, friend. <laughs> it's <Yeah>. a pretty <laughs> <laughs> So uh, I, w- I will say, man, this is, um, a, there was another EP, um, this is, this is a callback to, um, a fucking, a band that I saw, bands called Olivia Nuded John, like, like Nuded John, um, and their thing was like, and this, this goes back to the whole, like, look, I almost don't, like, you know what I mean, um, a lot of people almost don't care what it's about if you're going to as long as you're going to make some music and angry music about something that you're passionate about this this ep i found is called like trans day of violence and i was like that's fucking hilarious like the the concept of like nah fuck you i'm going out with scissors now and it's just like <laughs> oh man it's so death metal to me to be like so many people disagree with this but like I'm gonna fucking make my violent claim on it. It's just that's yeah. that's I really like that. I like a lot of I almost don't care what it's about. Like, are um, we about to establish but, an international holiday here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, but like I, so I just opted that. I was like, man, this is this is my chance to go. All these other um, justice movements and, and whatever uh, that like take these that are almost allowed to run with things like this, where it's like. Oh, you know, let them, not not let them, but it's like, no one bats an eyelid if, like, um, people who are against racism are violent in, in pursuit of that. No one bats an eyelid, but it's like, well, okay, for one day, we're going to do, th- do this for animals, and it's going to be a fucking purge, like, so, <laughs> that's, the, that's the vibe here. Um, I just, like, like... I think I think I like all of the lyrics on this man. Like, die for a new world. Like, just let the cunt starve. Like, <laughs> uh, you don't care. We'll make you. This is the new extreme. Fuck you. Like, yeah. It's, it's um. Yeah. Yeah. So, I love this song. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was a good one. I remember being yeah. good. Shout out Olivia Newton to John really quickly. I didn't I didn't want to straight up rip their song title because it's a fucking killer EP, but it's like um Vegan Day of Violence is perfect. With two V's in there. Come on. Fair enough. Well, track number six, we have Gas Chamber PT. I see PT and I'm like, gas chamber physical training? <laughs> well, gas chamber play, playable test. So 
like Silent Hill. Um, um, and Gas Chamber post trauma. Like, I guess that was my. Um, yeah, I, I really like that people. P- <laughs> PT is like. It could be a really, like, nothing thing, or it could be something really almost dark. Anyway. Um, yeah, man. So this one. Um, this is the. Uh, it's got the sample over it. So this is a uh, speech by Aussie activist Chris Delforce, who. Uh, filmed and orchestrated the documentary Dominion. He's the big, the, uh, I guess, the big activist in Australia who's had their house raided on like multiple occasions. Um, is is you know what I mean? Um, constantly under under watch by the fucking police, um, but still finds a way to get out there uh, and get this footage and and be the public face of this organisation. So uh, that was his speech and talking about how in making Dominion, the documentary, where it's like two and a half hours, he had to go through thousands of hours of footage of, of animals whose stories need to be told and him having to choose which ones to tell and which ones to, you know, just remember himself and then blah, blah, blah. And it was it's, it was horrific, man. He's, he said, like, part of this speech, he goes, like, everything made sense until I stepped inside a slaughterhouse. And you see mothers hanging with hooks from their eyes and babies trying to eat. Yeah, you know, it's like, dear fucking God, what are we doing? Like, yeah. Um, yeah, and, and that speech was enough, man. It was like, uh, this was the last song we recorded on the album, by the way. Uh, uh, it's, the album was done, and then we had this song, and I was like, no, we're, we're recording this properly. Like, we need a nice interlude. That's, like, yeah, sad. Yeah, for sure. What would you say is the most prominent uh, lyric that To The Grave made, that you made for this song? That kind of sticks. Uh, so Gas Chamber... Is, is it a lyricless interlude? It is a lyricless interlude. Okay. I'm trying to think, is this, do we do something at the end? No, no, that's lyricless. It's, um, <laughs> yeah. I always dance to do that. I'm like, are there any lyrics? It's like, there are no lyrics. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, but, on, I don't blame you because even sometimes I got to be like, did I do something at the end? I'm, I'm, I'm just silly like that, bro. That's yeah. fair. Well, yeah. track seven, you know, another, I would say, prolific track, you know, made in Oz. Okay. Made in Oz. Yeah, baby. You can't, it's going to be so bored when we play that live. Oh, that's, that's, 
goes into the fact that uh, man once you start caring about animals or once you once you open your circle of compassion to animals as you could say like people people will you can't it's going to be so bored with you know they'll life. go your whole lives trying to like get care to get help uh, to care about animals with you or whatever and then the second you will do that it's like no no tear them down um, you know what I mean the, the arguments that people have with their Fuck dealing with your like your racist ass uncle on on Christmas and and fuck dealing with you know anybody who tries to tell you that you know yeah like uh, animals should be fucking you know you know what I mean like any of these fucking dumb jokes you've heard it all bro like yeah yeah it's um look, fuck all that man um these people don't understand the harm that they're joking about and uh, I guess you look around good people are doing evil things and patting themselves on the back for it and saying I could never so yeah why do you want approval from these people why do you why do you, why do you need them to be your friend when, when those are indeed the people we discussed and brought awareness to earlier in the album who don't take accountability for their own philosophies but want to push some random bullshit on you and make you feel bad for what you know is true and dear to your heart fuck yep. them obstacles man exactly uh, this one's you... definitely more targeted as like yeah a, a, it's an australian thing right like yeah you see it everywhere as an Australian actor. It's the first thing you hear. It doesn't happen like that here. So this is our big, like, dude, you, you're not looking or you're choosing to to ignore it. And you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. exactly. You're deciding to cho- you're deciding to turn a blind eye if you really wholeheartedly believe that the issue we're talking about on this album is not also happening in the backyards of our own communities, cities, and countries you know like these bigger states per se in australia that are basically cities um what would be the standout lyric that you think speaks and quotes this song best yeah uh (laughs) the one thing i keep thinking about that's gonna be funny when people when it drops is like uh laugh at your massacres they never take enough like smile at your genocides it's about time because it's like uh, who knows? Maybe, <laughs> maybe in Minecraft, uh, mass. You know, you know, you know what I mean. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, like, it's it's a really dark way to look at tragedy, human tragedy, I guess. And being like, there's a plus side. Like, <laughs> despite all of that, there is there, hope. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's, it's super good. Well, it's track eight. Yeah, it is that. Track eight, we have eight four one six. Features Hopi Wiltshire. I'm just gonna say this. This is easily gonna be one of my albums of the year. I, I don't give a fuck. We appreciate that. Of course. Oh, thanks, man. Thank this. <laughs> the second I saw this album cover, I knew you guys were coming in fucking hot. Like director's cuts, global <laughs> warning, epilogue was sick. But there's something about this album that just fucking sets it in stone for me. I'm like, yep, this is the future. This is the future. Period. Oh, hey, bro. We just wanted to make something fun as fuck to to play and make. You know, it's something without a lot of. I guess pressure. Um, mm. and we all had a lot of fun, and it came out heaps quick and cool, and we're all proud of it. So thank you. Of course, of course, I can definitely tell that y'all had fun with this one. So here's to more fucking kettle tone, re- you know, all this <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah. Let's see.
Wilker. Is it Wiltshire or Wilker? Wilker. Okay. Wilker. So, yeah, what's going on with this one, man? Yeah, I've, I've said I've said a couple of times. Yeah, you know, I want to I want to make the, I want to give you something tastier. Sure. Because you know, like this this one obviously eight four one six. It's about the um, uh, Olivia. We we call her eight four one six. Was the tag that she had in her ear. It was a pig uh, pig on a farm in Australia that activists <clears throat> uh, got footage of her being uh, R worded. Um, uh, and no, uh, nothing happened to to this person. Uh, no charges laid. No, in fact, again, what do you? We all know what happened. Now the activists were fucking hunted down for it, and like, uh, so this Sophie uh, was pivotal in spearheading any kind of positive change that we were we, were, we almost sought for Olivia. Um, she was a big part of that. She's a, a great activist. Uh, and she has a great voice, so it all made sense. Uh, and this one, um, this one is my, I guess, uh, it definitely switches where you could read the lyrics and be like, this isn't about a pig. No, this is definitely more, um, like, uh, my part is a little tired. I'll, I'll get to that. But Sophie's bit talks about how, I guess, when you're in these places, when you're like, you know what I mean? You go to these places, uh, I, I've, I've talked before about how you just wish people would care. On repetitive, <clears throat> after going back to these places, after doing public outreach and whatever, sometimes your brain goes, uh, you've you seen that Bill Burr um, uh, stand up where he goes, you know, you just like, yeah, but just, you know, nobody, you're nobody, then you drive on the footpath for 10 seconds. You're a yeah. superstar. You're a celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love yeah. Bill Burr, dude. He's funny. <laughs> <laughs> so fucking gold, bro. Yeah, like, that. she kind of does that. She's like, she's really, she's a sweet girl, bro. But to hear her talk about, like, no, I really wish I could do one to them, what, you know, um, what they've done to these animals uh take parts of them where i left parts of myself it's like that that's so in that's so strong to me man i i want to take parts of people where i've had parts of me taken like yeah. so um, if i may say from a like someone who's a definitely a consumer and you know as you quoted earlier in session which has really really stuck with me since and i'm really trying to follow that philosophy free from now on and create as opposed to consume but mm. dude i'm surprised you guys haven't done anything that utilizes the uh, the animal farm plot oh dude. yeah the, the the movie yeah 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 where it's the mm. animals they're like you know they, they form governments they become intelligent they go after the people instead i'm surprised you guys haven't utilized that yet like yeah, man it's i i know i i think someone said that to me like the whole like your sci-fi thing where it's like almost cows with guns right like almost like it's a very loose um i i what i like about us is that we talk about uh we we try really hard to talk about real experiences with this kind of stuff right and um you know i mean every now and then like like acts of kindness is a bit of like a we're gonna barbecue everybody we're gonna open a human food truck oh, right. so yeah. we get some, some tongue-in-cheek moments right um but I like for the most part that we stay as close to like found footage. I really wanted it to you to understand what it feels like to be out there in the dark, risking your freedom, thinking, you know what I mean? I, I why am I here? Like, I, why is this happening anyway? Like, um, I love that we can do that more than we can illustrate a, a theatrical. You know, we, we could, and maybe one day, like we've got a lot of bags that we want to get into as well, bro. Like, but yeah, I really like that we are giving. I'm just gonna say this: this is easily going to be one of my albums uh, of the year. The activists. Uh, um, you're so you're nobody else likes that. that. I, I still. Oh, like thanks, it. man. Yeah, you're, what you're this, doing, what Two <laughs> the Brave has done so far. The second I saw this album cover, I knew you guys were coming in for light. Like director's cuts, knowledge, level warning, what's epilogue actually was sick, but There's something the about this album that you know, just all these real life scenarios in each for one thing. Like, yeah, pretty like this is the future. This is you know the future. That's that's a huge target. 
Right, that's a Maybe targeted we just story. To make something that fun is fun something to, that you guys deeply play, care about, and you've done the and research make, to know, find out that about that through Dominion and other efforts. Yeah, pressure. So then, um, mm, in the future, it's like, okay, well, you know, we wrote quick and six cool or seven and albums so about you. that. Of so course, of course, now, I can definitely tell that y'all have fun. You know, maybe with this later one. down the road, like some more fucking maybe it would be like Animal Kingdom or something like a play on the word Animal Kingdom, and it's it's the the farm animals. Taking back hell, dude. I'm down to try to get you features. Oh, I'm down to try to get you features. Oh, I'm down to try to get you features. Oh, I'm down to try to get you features. Oh, I'm down to try to get you features. Oh, I'm down to try to get you features. Oh, I'm down to try to get you features. Oh, I'm down to try to get you features. Oh, I'm down to try to get you features. Oh, I'm down to try to get you features. Oh, I'm down to try to get you features. Oh, I'm down to try to get you features. Oh, I'm down to try to get you features. Oh, I'm down to try to get you features. Oh, I'm down to try to get you features. Oh, I'm down to try to get you features. And yeah. then starting a whole new timeline per se, and I mean, especially as those books come out when they do, I think that that'll be like even more of a full circle moment than this, right? Yeah. But that'll be the beauty of that legacy is that we'll be hand in hand, and once that time comes, we'll be like, hey, Dane, remember that book I told you about? It's out, my friend. <laughs> and then we'll get yeah, started. That's gonna um, be sick. Fuck yeah. Sweet. Hey, out, dude. Yeah. I appreciate that. So now we have track nine out of ten. We're almost done talking about this record, but I wish we were. Um, we got Terror of the Military Man. What, what's going on with this one? Yeah, so this, um, we did a song on Off Cuts called Bloodhounds, where this was, I guess, more of the, like, that, that military vibe, right? Where, where, um, it's a bit of a call to arms for, like, yeah, I, I guess mobilize, right? What we're saying in these kind of songs is, like, the industries that we're up against, uh, this, this empire of animal abuse is so unfathomably organized and with it's so much in their favor that we we need to be um they don't take a second they don't take a day off murdering animals and trying to silence activists so we can't um yeah um so in I, that way you're deciding to embrace what they probably would call all the activists and the way that the FBI responded to those few activists calling them terror terrorists, putting them on yeah. a terror watch list. You're like, fine, I guess we're a terror military then, motherfucker. Pretty, like, pretty much, yeah. It's like, I'm, I'm done trying to convince, yeah, exactly. If How are you going to try to convince somebody who determines, like, who pretty much determines the meaning of words, that you're not that word. No, fuck that. I'll, I'll be whatever the fuck you want me to be. I don't give a shit. I need animals out of cages. Like, yes. you know? Yeah. Simple enough, man. Simple fucking enough, dude. And the thing is, sometimes, th there, there's a saying. I'm not sure if, I'm not sure by who, but it's definitely a saying. We all understand this. Sometimes you have to be the villain of the story because a great number of people misunderstand what you're trying to chase after. And, you know, maybe briefly diverting to a more political standpoint, dude, the manipulation of information, no matter the topic, is insane. Yeah. It is insane how often people are redirected and re deflected when there happens to be a wall there. They don't see the wall, but instead they bounce off of it like a tennis ball or something, you know? And yeah. that's kind of what misinformation is to me, because the funny thing is, we're just on different sides of the wall. Right, yeah. we're aiming for the same thing, but the mortar and brick has been there for ages, so we can't exactly demolish it. Like the walls are probably supposed to be there, we're not really thinking outside the box and trusting our yeah. instincts. So then, unfortunately, yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah, um, yeah. it's it's beautifully psychotic how easy it has been 
for countries around the world to do that, really. I think the most recent example would be Chile um, here in the U.S., unfortunately, and Venezuela. Of course, there's deception, there's betrayal, there's misleading information everywhere. But unfortunately, when you're raised nationalist on the level that most Americans like myself have been, well, you're convinced that we are the babysitter of the world and that we are the world's hero and that the Nazis mm -hmm. were absolutely, completely, undeniably scumbags. They were the way they acted, but in their hearts, they became the villain of their story, saved their country, and then we annihilated for them for that. Now, disclaimer. Yeah. <laughs> this is not me advocating for the Nazis. Oh, no, like, no, no, that's... To, if you're going to say, oh, man, you only have to say that that was all everybody was bad no like that's not then you're ignoring a lot of history and how that was allowed to happen like it was it was so much more complicated than that then oh that's that's so obviously wrong yes yes um that's what's so scary about how that was exactly yeah that disregards a lot to be like can't say that <laughs> And that, that's unfortunately, too, just the way that things work these days. Like, I'm yeah. telling you, bro, with this podcast unintentionally and with the podcast I just started with my buddy utilizing um, those hour segment formulas, um, I, we talked about a lot of shit. We talked a lot of a lot. Blah, blah, blah. We talked a lot about a lot of bold shit. See how yeah. complicated that was? <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, dude when you have someone like me who is an absolute nobody if my channels are demonetized just because i spoke about history the way i did just now that's how you know we have a global issue whether in you know it, it just goes global that's that's all exactly I know. exactly uh, i uh, i love that this happens every second or third interview they'll they'll stop it and go all right I wonder how this one's actually gonna go when I upload it. This goes, man, like, you, it's fucking dealing with to the grave. Sorry, like. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, not only that, dude, but if you've ever seen my personal Instagram story, I can't tell you how much Instagram recently has just been trying to dox me and like deplatform me. But it's because I'm speaking out of transparency on certain matters that a company owned by, co-owned by Mark Zuckerberg, like they just don't want certain things to come out and they it's it's just ridiculous dude the yeah. control and the manipulation is absurd but the thing is i haven't been deplatformed yet so i could give less of a fuck about what i say because the thing is i'm not a piece of shit and if anything else i plan to host a great many controversial bands on the podcast in the future not calling to the grave controversial you guys are just activists against fucking animal abuse boohoo if anybody has an issue with that um yeah. yeah like there are a great many bands i plan to host in the future that a lot of people have issues with but it's because they did not on their own terms dig behind the scenes and discover deeper contexts and deeper reasons behind why certain things unfolded and why they have no choice but to be quiet or stay off the of record labels all this other shit I plan to give those bands a voice because no one else wants to, and this is not me trying to be a hero, but it's actually just me trying to give them a voice and give them an opportunity to fucking speak for themselves instead of yeah. being internet canceled into the dirt. Anyways. No, god damn, man. If, if everything's, like, if we can't have echo chambers. Like, we, we, we can't. Like, it's... No. It gets us fucking nowhere. Um, yeah, and deplatforming people, man, is, like, exactly what exactly what they want us to do like yeah like getting each other fucking booted off no fuck all that like <clears throat> talk to each other right yeah. talk to each other have a conversation mm. agree to disagree and then fucking move on mm. simple as that um so we have the last track dead rock
you're wrong about me, motherfuckers. <laughs> Uh, yeah. But obviously, this is the this is the the epilogue mm. to the album. Um, that is everyone's a murderer. Um, so, why did you decide for this to be the last track? If I remember correctly, this being the first song you released a music video for to kickstart this album cycle. Yeah, man. So we we knew once a few things lined up that we knew were going to be talking points, right? So we, we finished this song, it was like, okay, there's a cool chorus, there's two solos, it's a, like, there's this weird, like, not weird for us, but it's like, I guess weird for the two solos to have the, like, hardcore kind of feature come in. Um, it's very to the grave, especially, like, it, it kind of explained a, a bunch of the new directions that we'd like, all bundled into one that I don't think you can find I, I don't think it's a great representation of what the whole album is going to sound like, but I like that. I like that it's it's yeah. its own thing. And maybe um, that's why it's last but not least favorite. Exactly. On the track. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. It, it couldn't be, we couldn't have it not be a single, but it also couldn't be a single. So it had to be a single. Does that make sense? Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> Um, is this marketable? Ah, who cares? Let's just do it. <laughs> right, yeah, like, that's what I mean. <laughs> Once it started lining up, it was like, people are going to say, this is the last song on the album. Why did you release this as a single? Does a whole album sound like this? They're going to start freaking out, and it's like, we'll, we'll just give it a few days to let that, like, chew, and it did. You know? Man, it it's going to be an interesting premiere weekend for you boys, for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, like, yeah, I think... Looking back now as well, like we do, we do this all the time. We go, oh, was that actually the right decision? I go, man, it, it was at the time, and it so therefore it still is. Like, yeah, um, it's a time capsule of what your instincts told you in that moment. Yeah, like we, ha yeah, if yeah, nobody was hurt when we released it that way. So who gives a fuck, right? Like it's, um, I like trying different stuff. I like doing stuff that's a little bit maybe what we haven't done before if i had a my way dude we probably would just drop the album like not announce it not hype it no climax no crescendo just boop, here we go we're making new stuff and, anyways bye-bye <laughs> yeah and i would give you i would make it like fucking to the grave day bro like i'd, I'd put five music videos out in a day you'd sit there and and the next day everyone would forget about it or whatever, but that's that's why I don't make decisions. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I, like Fair enough, man. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I, I think the only thing that I would adjust to, because you know, we're kind of talking about how albums are typically released these days, whether you're on a record label like Unique Leader Records, which is, let's be honest, tier one of really making your heavy fucking band relevant and then you know you can continue climbing the ladder but there's nothing wrong with that so yeah. for me i think the best formula to keep all of the modern day music consumers who quite literally have millions of bands to listen to and therefore multiply that by two or three for the amount of standalone singles eps or length like albums right yeah. so you keep that in mind and i think the one thing that i would change about how we're doing things right now is that and i think i mentioned this to another band before you guys on this album have three songs with features right so i think the only thing that i personally am planning on doing in the future is my band's second single which that's going to be the first one that we have a feature on um, to be honest to anybody who happens to be this late to the podcast if you do it early, it's going to be a single from the full-length version of the first one that you want to release. So you're going to think it's a standalone single and then it's going to reappear by that is for example if you're to the grave and you get traders tyler shelton from traders featured on your song just release actually a flag version of the single art with both logos on it because people will eat that up in a fucking second one but two have a whole entire merch drop themed around 
to the grave on one sleeve, traitors on the other sleeve. Yeah. And I know that there is a major fucking industrial cock block when it comes to that stuff, whether the band is independent or on a label. So it's like, yeah, I know. Sometimes you have to pay a decent budget to even incorporate the band's logo on your merch. Let's fix that. Let's get rid of that shit because it's fucking stupid. Of course, pay your featured vocalist a decent amount of money to be featured. Don't fucking charge upwards of 1500 just to have their logo featured on your shirt, which is going yeah. to cost probably another 1500 just to have the shirts manufactured. That's the most retarded thing ever. And that, yeah. that's kind of what I've observed. I can't confirm that, so yeah. I don't know yeah, shit, yeah. to be honest, yeah. but that's kind of what I've gathered over time. So it's like, build up more hype by releasing a music video for that feature, having the vocalist, guitarist, for whoever you're featuring, from their what they do best, the reason they're on there, have them in the music video, and then have a feature merch drop. Do that for every single song that you have a feature for on the album, and then you have a more validated merch collection orbiting around that release based off of the feature drops and then the regular drops and then you know because it's 2024 and shibori threads has been around for a long time maybe do a collab with them maybe do a custom dye like three color custom dye glow in the dark custom jumpsuit whatever you want to do and that also allows you to kind of tangent out to the wild with the kind of new growing young brand that also shows hey they know about these guys they know about yeah. them. it is the best of the best when it comes to custom dyed garment technology and culture so before yeah. you know kind of flying off with that tangent that's something that i really was hoping avoided would do being that they had a feature for every fucking song on their last album it's like why didn't y'all just slowly climax crescendo with different merch collections themed after the songs it oh, seemed oh, like they were going to right yeah like when when they start i know what you mean it seemed like that was gonna go that angle yeah i'm surprised they didn't though and i'm uh, dude on top of that when they had the little action figure for mania cult dude imagine having an entire collection of toy figures from vaults of horror themed off of characters that are yeah. maybe catered or modeled after the featured vocalist or guitarist yeah. Like, how much money yeah. would that make you? You know what I mean? So, yeah. like, if nobody else wants to do it, I thought of that first, maybe. So I'll do it in the future. But... Dude, this is like, this is, that's the whole industry, right? It's like, uh, if if I can't think of anybody immediately that's done that, I'm just going to fucking, yeah, tr write that down. And hopefully one day I get to that idea myself. Like, it's, it's, it's music, man. Like it's music. It's music, yeah. but it's also art. And just like... Um, going to see a movie in the movie theaters and then wanting to get that nice, you know, sleek steelbook collector's edition of the movie or the show that you've been watching recently. Well, for one, that's going to make the creators a good chunk of money. And two, you have a physical representation of something that you love. That's the reason that I became, like, so fascinated with the way that creators are working for vinyl variants and stuff. Not gonna lie, but it's people buy every single variant of the vinyl, but that's the plan. I get it. But you're trying to pop they sell one of those fortune vinyls for the price to the party bro! <laughs> At least you offer the disclaimer, right? You know, you're yeah, really yeah. putting yourself out there. You're like, hey, I'm not perfect either when it comes to spending. But yes, that's a good idea too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I, um, yeah. yeah. With Dead Wrong, then, I mean, this is this is the way that you wrap up your album, and you know, maybe it is not the like I would say it's a pretty good way of representing the variety and the the genre fluidity per se throughout the entirety of the record, whilst also making it you know to the grave providing that to the grave oh, oh, you know death core is dead cut off the head um identity that it's always had so i guess specifically for death wrong before i ask about michael kearney 
I would then ask, like, why did this not end up being the beginning of the album? Like, was that pretty on the money with how I was observing things? Yeah, more or less, man. Like, so we... It's it's a big... Uh, I guess it's a moment thing. Like, we... Because we didn't write Dead Wrong to be the last song on the album, right? It just kind of was almost pushed to the back of the record by, by the sound of it. Like, um, we, we had... Just like we had songs that we knew were stronger what we felt was written to be like a stronger intro like set yourself on fire yeah. that had a bit more of a like again mind you pairing all this with stuff that we want to do live like if we played the record live we'd want i want to start with a bit of energy in that flavor and then yeah uh dead wrong i still feel like has enough of those elements, but like, man, like, big, big fucking breakdown at the end. Um, everyone leaves happy. Um, yeah, it's, um, we, we do, and again, this is why, like, uniquely to help us with this kind of stuff, because we, we would probably spend, uh, spend a lot more time on, on these kind of things that, like, really, like, when, when, a, when another set of ears hears it, they go, oh, this is the order. We go, oh, why? They just go, I don't know. It just, it sounds right to me. I go, okay, like, we've spent eight months with the record. So, like, um, we, for us to not have any kind of set thing in mind for our label and managers to be like, yeah, this actually works, kind of helps us a lot with that. But, Probably um, reasons confidence, too. Yeah, man. Um, just having a couple of extra people in the camp to be like, this is how I feel like the order should go. On a fresh listen, um... There's a lot of that. There's a lot of yeah. Dead Run did just kind of end up on the on the back end of the album, and then kind of ended up being a single. It's really funny like that, but I think we it was a happy accident the way that a lot of this record was. Yeah, in, in that way too. Now that you kind of confirmed some of my observations, some of my hypotheses regarding the placement in the track listing of this album um, for Dead Wrong, I kind of think of like going through the entire process of trying to ask a girl in the back of a busy crowd for her number <laughs> or something. So you're like, oh man, there's so many people in the way already. Like, should I even worry about it? Like, yeah, absolutely, dude. Like, go go off for a drink or something, as long as it's not Spike, because that's, no, no. <laughs> so then, you know, you soar through the crowd, you're like, oh man, she's like, she's really pretty. Am I gonna mess this up? Am I gonna fuck this up? And you're like, wow, I was dead wrong. She's pretty humble in that way. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Funny way I fucking put in it. Oh, yeah. So then, you know, we've we've now conquered the track listing behind such an entertaining staple album in you guys' discography as far as not being too serious, not taking yourself too seriously, but still sustaining your musical identity, okay? So when we have all of that in mind, and after talking about the tracks, after conducting a lobotomy for Everyone's a Murderer, and now, now that it's been a couple of weeks, you know, maybe the some points in the conversation don't immediately conjure into mind, but we are talking with you. Um, talking about bands that inspired all of the members into the grave, what distinguishes Everyone's a Murderer from other iconic records relevant to deathcore in your personal opinion. So I remember, for example, we were talking a lot about the cleansing and how you mm -hmm. guys did not want everyone's a murderer to be just, oh yeah, this is to the graves, the cleansing. It's like, no, mm -hmm. but we also really like that album. So we wanted to try to bring a little bit of that back, but not make it blatantly like, oh yeah, this is, to the Graves MySpace era deathcore moment album, whatever yeah, the fuck. Yeah. So, you know, with, with that context in mind, with that example in mind, um, what makes this album relevant to you guys as opposed to those other iconic records that then bring you into that studio? Have you cook yeah. up this album and prepare it for the end of the month now? I think what I really like about what I really like about this, and it's it's might seem uh obvious or even or like oh of course that's a bit like everyone would have this but no man like this one really feels like it was a product of, like a product of its time mm -hmm. with us so like i've had i've even had people say there's the like 
this happens to Australian bands. You go play overseas, you do 30 shows in a row, come back, and then your, your sound changes because you don't want to play that shit for 30 shows in a row again. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's like, well, there's there's parts of, of that that we, we definitely, uh, like, we take souvenirs from the road, we throw it into the sound, and, like, you know, from every every experience we have, we take little things and try to throw it into the sound. But that was... I think this time more than ever, we, we did a really hard steer, um, especially so soon after our last record, where we really wanted it to be soon after the last record so people could go into it with an opener mind and being like, oh, we've waited two years for this record. Uh, and it sounds completely different. Like, um, Right. So I, I mean, like that. Yeah. perhaps then to the grave, its intention always has been in for lack of a better word, for lack of a better phrase, it is always meant to create albums that are a time lapse, a time capsule buried in the sands, buried in the deserts of Australia that then represent the time exclusively, right? It represents the time, the emotions, and the creative mind at these certain points in time in you guys' legacy. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great way of putting it. Sweet. And see, that's why... That's why time capsules in and of itself is just such a fascinating thing. It could just be a photo. It could just be a VHS tape um, regarding someone's wedding. And it just happens to be buried in the deserts of Nevada, pretty close to Area 51. You're like, why is this close to Area 51? Am I going to get shot for like unearthing this tape? <laughs> but, you know, that that's the beauty of it. There's a, there's a sense of mystery and there's a greater philosophical puzzle that you then have to put together once you do find that time capsule. So yeah, yeah, it's yeah, yeah you got to you've got to make the story happen yourself, right? Like yeah, exactly. exactly. You got to piece it together. But that's the beauty of it is that in a way it either conjures more intelligence within your own psychscape to un- unravel that puzzle or you know, you can just leave it back in the desert. You can just rebury it and just never worry about it again. <laughs> Not yeah. obsess over it, right? Sure. Um, I don't know what the fuck the problem is, bro. My phone, it is as on charge. Will, will is dying like a motherfucker. I'm on three percent, and I'm just like giving you the heads up. Right. <laughs> I fucking no. We will compare. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, uh, question five then would read how and why I, this is a pretty obvious one but how and why did everyone's a murderer become an album instead of an ep mm. Mm. we like big bodies of work bro the <laughs> eps the eps are the only the only reason we've done eps so far is because we had extra stuff after making the albums like we're 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 creatively um exhaustive <laughs> right okay yeah. that, that's, that's a pretty easy answer yeah. and the thing is too you, you got to keep your audience in mind right people they enjoy a good appetizer but they still want that five course meal no matter yeah. where you're from so always that's pretty easy question six and it's not even really a question never was never has been never will be um briefly discuss the future shout out to any bands or people if applicable that you think is just relevant to the here and now right after basically us concluding this conversation other than another question yeah man um it's a great question like i think after this conversation it's it's harder to definitely harder to give um i I wish there were more bands that i could give shout out to for being so important in these categories, but like, man, all right, blood mouth from Australia, pretty pivotal, for these kinds of things. Um, uh, I love what bands like, yeah, face cutter are doing really fucking like, uh, dirty, you know, not, not polished, like to the grave is like, it's <laughs> almost like they don't give a fuck if anybody goes if anybody cares it's like it's dirty and it's angry and it's offensive and i love that like i wish more of that was appreciated um but that's i think like man to the grave is always going to be looking at like uh looking down the ladder at what is what's the scary thing coming behind us yeah Not what's the cool thing in front of us like what's the yeah, what are these younger guys doing that it's fucking like crazy and cool and like can we get them involved with us and whatever? Like I, I like that more than 
Yeah. So we're always going to be looking at hardcore and grind and shit like that to find little like little things to throw in the pot. And that's why I like this cycle. It feels like that more than ever, bro. And it's going to get, we're going to double down, especially with the, uh, with all our cremated equal. I'm glad that you've got the like, cause we have to talk about that when it comes out now, but like, yeah, <laughs> but it definitely hits on all that. Like uh, oh my a God. lot of this, you'd be like, Oh my God. And we talked about that. Like we talked so, to, dude. Yeah. and that's the thing moments like that. I, I, I kid you not. That's what makes me so that's what makes me feel so important. And it feels like I've truly embedded myself in the scene without like being all clickbaity or leaking fucking album titles and shit. It's like, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. You know, we just happen to talk about that for, for a little bit. But th those yeah. are really, really great moments. So I appreciate you for that. Um Likewise, so Dave. the final question for this interview, my friend, and this is this is a newer one, you know, this is kind of I would say the most pressurous question it's like i don't know man like it, it could be either that oh i don't know or that oh yeah like this 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 so what band would you want to see on the anatomy cross cast in the future if you could choose one oh oh that's a good one that's like i like that okay it, it's um, like Peter, like the first time I asked that, I'm like, oh, this is such a fucking dick move. Like, who do you want to see on my no. shit? <laughs> like, <laughs> no, I like that. Um, I really like the thing I've been on lately is the dudes from like Bound in Fear and Pint Glass. Mm. Like, I, I would lo <laughs> fucking love to hear more about that. I just, I, and I, I just like your way of fucking asking about shit. I don't know that that to me is just a vibe I've been on lately. If you can get pint glass on, I know that's like that's like fucking probably doable as well. That's like, yeah, dude. If, yeah. if I can get, I've been wanting. Here's the thing, too. I can easily say that throughout my three years of doing this, I have been an absolute undeniable simp for Unique Leader Records and every band that gets scooped onto there, only mm. because from the very beginning, bands like Distant, bands like Signs of the Swarm, you guys um fucking worm shepherd when they jumped on there dude i was in the forefront of them like saying yo we're about to jump on the unique leader records that also happened with the breathing process awaken providence um i wish i could say the same for nithful but that just hasn't happened yet so i mean behind the scenes people i'll have you all know that i've been like really really involved with most of the bands who have recently jumped on and if nothing else man if i don't make a single goddamn cent from anything that i made i am proud of that so therefore, yeah. I'm proud to hear that, you know, the Dane Evans from To The Grave would recommend that Bound in Fear or Pine Class get on the show because I think- And my Waking the Cadaver. If you can get Waking the Cadaver, bro, I'd watch the oh fuck out of them. Oh my God, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I might be yeah. getting Ophagus on and Don is, Don's in that band too, so. I'm gonna say, just make it, yeah, that's sick. Just shut the door and that's mad. <laughs> I'm on no, my consent, bro. No. It'll die any second now. Uh, if it does, I, I love you, and I'll fucking talk to you when I, I just uh, I'm scared. This will die. Like, are are you serious? Yeah, like it's it's gone down to one percent. Um, like if if I can fucking leave it on charge for a bit and then get some back, like I I'm fucking on. <laughs> yeah, I it's see. Just it's just doom, man. It's over. doom, and my fucked up my fucking Samsung. Um, fair enough. Well. I think that's actually a great way to go ahead and conclude the session. For a second, I thought you were talking about to the grave and not your phone. I'm like, wait a minute. Why, why are you oh, saying no. that? God, no. No, fuck. Um, <laughs> your phone. I'm sorry, bro. I'll, um, we, can, we can even tee up another chat when I get my fucking shit together. Oh, no, you're good. You're good. Um, we can go ahead and conclude the session now. Um, thank you, everybody, for listening to the Anatomy Crosscast, what will be episode 84, releasing this next Friday, people alongside everyone's a murderer it was a great honor and privilege to again go full circle with to the grave talk with them the way that i did lyrically dissect this record um but this will be this will be the end for now i'm totally kidding thank you all i'm so sorry i'm a fucking it's always australians and our fucking like internet and technologies <laughs> no, no. Behind, i'm sorry no um, you're fine dane you're fine bro it's okay thank you everybody for hanging out and chilling with us um yeah, and we'll see you guys next time. Later. Later, G.